in a moment. Here we are. We, were, we are recording. This is the mini prep, miniature prep procedure for purification of plasma DNA from E. coli, recombinant E. coli. All right. I'm going to do two classes here. Uh, tape, uh, period three. Period three. We have our cells. Suspended in solution one, spin columns in the middle, and then final collection tubes at the end. The same thing for period 12. The difference with period 12 is I have little black dots on everything to denote it's period 12. You also may, may see different numbers. You see 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, wait, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then you see... Um, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Those numbers correspond to these numbers in our final collection box that we'll send to Rutgers. So if you see those numbers, that's why they're somewhat different. All right, let's begin. So it's gonna start with solution two. We're skipping solution one. Actually, we're not skipping it. We did solution one already. Solution one is done. These cells are already in solution one. Solution one was that isotonic um, chelating solution that your cells were sitting in. I'm going to open up all six of the cell tubes. And I'm going to add times two because there's two classes. I'm going to add 200 of solution two to each tube. All right, so let me double check. Solution two. Here we go. Here's my solution two. Solution two. Okay, here we go. 200. Double check my volumes. 200 of solution two. I'll do period 12 first because it's closer to me. Solution two. Table two. Table three. Table four. Table five, table six. Here's period three, table one, table two, table three, table four, table five, and table six. Now I was really careful to make sure that I saw that solution two went into every microfuse tube. I'm going to close these up. Now, solution two is a soap. It's sodium dodecyl sulfate. I'm going to invert every single one five times, basically, about five times. Solution, and I'm going to talk about solution two. Solution two is a soap. It's basic. All soaps are basic. All soaps are basic, even hand soap at home. Sodium palmitate, sodium cocoate, sodium palmitate, sodium cocoate. Listen to those words, sodium cocoate. They're carboxylic fatty acids, but they're not acidic. The H plus from the carboxyl group is gone and replaced with sodium. So visualize a carboxyl group, but no H plus. Visualize the sodium there instead. That's what soaps are. Soaps are fatty acids, but they're not acids. <laughs> they're fatty acids, but they're not acids. They're salt, salted fatty organic structures. <laughs> you can't call them acids because the acids have been washed off. The H pluses, excuse me, have been washed off. The acid anions are still there, but the H pluses are washed off. So I'm just mixing these to make sure that these soaps work. Soaps have to be very basic. They cannot be H plus rich. They're not protonated. So we need these to be basic, and they are. So solution two is sodium hydroxide and soap. It's actually a soap called sodium dodecyl sulfate, but honestly, it's pretty, it's just a soap. Soap molecules are polar and nonpolar at the same time. They're amphipathic. Polar and nonpolar. And I like these. Look. So, how do I know this worked? Each one 
is dissolved. That's what soaps do. They dissolve things. Come on. And that's what I want. I want these cells to dissolve. I want the membranes to dissolve in the liquid. I want the ribosomes and the enzymes and the DNA, everything to dissolve. I principally want the, the membranes dissolving. Good. And I know it's done when I see a dissolution, dissoluted state. Good. All right. So now our soaps have done their job. They've dissolved the cell membranes. Let's do solution three. Now solution three is the opposite of a soap. It's an acid. It's potassium acetate and acetic acid. This is an acid. We're bringing the pH back down to neutral. It was really basic. Now we're bringing it back down to neutral. Let's do it. Solution three, my volume, which is not super important, is 350. Get rid of that tip. Don't want to use the tip again. Let me dial to 350. Okay. Oh, I should open them up. So I have to be careful not to spill them. That would be disastrous. And Jonesy's, Jonesy can be clumsy. I can be clumsy. You take me to a restaurant, I'm probably going to knock something over. But when it comes to biotech, I'm extra careful. Hopefully. Here we go. Solution three. Solution three is an acid. I'll start. Table 12. I mean, table uh, here 12 again. Here we go. T1. T2. T3, T4, T5, T6. Now I'm watching. Trust me, I am. I'm watching it go in. T1, up, up, period three, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. That's solution three. I double check everything. Solution three, done. Solution three is an acid. The pH is going down from the alkaline pH that the soap loves. And we're going to bring the pH to somewhat neutral. So the soap, no worky. The soap doesn't work anymore. The soap will not work because we're adding H pluses. And when you add H pluses, those carboxyls, it's really sulfates on this case, but it's the same idea. The carboxyls, the sulfates in the soap, they protonate. And then if you protonate them, give them protons from the H pluses, then it doesn't work like a soap. There's no charged end. So now the soap doesn't work. Let's check. See the precipitate? One, two, three, four, five. That's what we what we want. I know it worked because the soap is not dissolving anything anymore. The soap is not dissolving and instead things are precipitating like membranes because membranes membranes are really soaps they have a polar end and a non-polar end membranes are soaps but so we, we've disrupted the membranes everything that has protons now the soap doesn't work and we're getting precipitated masses Again, a soap is just a molecule with a charged end and a nonpolar end. That's the bell. We're going to keep going. Give you a break in a minute. We're going to put these in for the big spin, the five-minute spin. Almost ready. Okay, so I'm just making sure that the acid got to all the soap because I don't want the acid to not get to the soap. I want the acid to get to the soap because I don't want the soap to work. The soap is still working. We got a problem. And the soap doesn't seem to be working at all. And that's what we want. We want precipitates. So now we're going to spin these to get the precipitates 
away from the DNA, the supernatant. Uh, I'm going to put these in this big guy over here. All right, so I'm going to, all right, here we go. I'm going to put PR12 on one side. And I'll put PR3 on the other. Let me show you. This is period 12. And the other side is period 3. We're going to spin these for five minutes. And this is where you can take a break. This is called the big spin. All right. So five minutes. Enjoy. I'll see you then. I have to keep the video going because I don't think I can pause these videos, unfortunately. Not in Google, in Google Meet, I can't. So I'm just going to let, let it go. If you're watching the video, guys, this is where you pause. Um, um, fast forward. Fast forward the video. Five minutes. I'll see you in five. Um, Mr. G yeah, Mr. Jones, sure. what's up? So I have a question. I don't know if you could answer it or not, but uh, so like I looked at the corrections, and I tried to find like before where I could get glutaridoxin from, but I couldn't find like where like I could source it or whatever. Do you want purified glutaridoxin? Yeah. You can buy it. Oh, so if I just say I bought my glutaridoxin, that would be good enough? Yes, and put a link to where you would purchase it. Okay, all right, thank you. So usually it's made, it's made in recombinant bacteria, and then they purify it from recombinant bacteria, kind of like what we're doing, what we're doing with DNA. Mm -hmm. You can buy it, but then just, you know, don't, don't say I'm going to put it in my cell. Tell right. me how you get it in your cell, you because you still have to get the glutaridoxin into your cells, right? And you could electroporate if you want. Okay, I said inject. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll take. It. I mean, if your cells are big enough, you really can't inject bacteria. But what's your cell? Is it duckweed or human or what? We said, um, or I said, my bad. Uh, what's it called? Human liver cells. Okay, in vitro or in vivo? Uh, one second. Um, in the living human or in a, in a petri dish? In a dish. In a in a petri dish. Okay, so that'd be in vitro. Okay. Yeah, you can you can inject them. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.
Almost ready. All right, and we're back. Here we go, we're back. Our break is over. So I'm gonna dial my pipetter. Actually, wrong step, here we go. So, let's take a look. This is, oh, these are tough to get out. Okay, so this is period six. P6, I'm sorry, excuse me, P12, T6, T4, T2, T1, P12, T3, P12, T5. All right, that worked out. Let's do you guys. I think that's one. I use deduction. That's five. Ugh, I think that's six. My handwriting. P3, T2. P3, T. That's two. That's three. And P3, T1. So this must be four. All right. So, now we have to open up our these things. These things are called spin columns. These columns do one thing really well. They grab plasmid DNA. That's what they do. And they don't discriminate. They'll grab any plasmid DNA. They'll grab any DNA, but they're really good at grabbing plasmid DNA. They do it with a silica bridge that grabs phosphates. So if, if you have a lot of phosphates, They'll grab it. They'll grab you. A lot of negative charges. They'll grab it. There's an image in the form of these things. They're called spin columns, and they grab plasmid DNA. I'm going to open up all of them. Oh, if you notice, they're nestled, nestled in a little collection tube. This is going to be junk, and this is going to be the gold. We want the columns. I'm going to open up period 12s as well. And then we're going to, one by one, take your precipitate and not use that. We want the other liquid called the supernatant, and we're going to pour those in. See, I'm pouring everything except for the white stuff. I don't want the white stuff. I'm pouring all of the supernatant. and not the white stuff. All of the liquid and not the white stuff. The white stuff is precipitated soap and membranes and larger nonpolar molecule molecules. Now you may go, why well, are they at the bottom? because the soap aggregates and precipitates with them because the soap is not working anymore. 
and we centrifuge them down to separate them from the aqueous phase. I'm going to close these up. And I'll put this whole assembly in the centrifuge. I'll show you in, in a minute. All right, let me do um, pier 12. Pouring the supernatant. not the white precipitate. I make sure that the numbers match, of course. This is T3, P12. T5, so you can see the liquid in the column. It's going to be pulled through the column and the column is going to grab the plasmid DNA. It's gonna grab it. This is called a mini prep. We're gonna, we're, we're doing a miniature preparation of plasmid DNA. All right. Let me show you guys what I did. I put all 12 spin columns, this is period 12, and this is you guys, period three, in a balanced centrifuge. We're gonna spin these for a minute. We're gonna pull that liquid through. Ooh, that's too much. I actually have it for two minutes. Yeah, we'll let it go for two. All right, you get a two-minute break. More really can't hurt. Okay, two minutes. Fast forward if you want. You can fast forward the video. Two minutes.
Here we go. We're back. So this is done. We pulled that liquid through the column, the, and the column does one thing really well. What does it do? Anybody? What does the column do? Anybody? It does one thing really well. What does the column do? You don't want to say it because you don't want to be on video? They're being shot. They don't want to be on video. Okay. You guys can hear me, right? They're nodding. I'll let it go. They don't want to be on video. The column grabs plasmid DNA. That's its job. It preferentially grabs plasmid DNA. All right. So we have to get rid of all of that flow through. If you can see all that liquid, we don't want that. We want the column. So we're going to dump out that liquid from all of these. And I'm happy because the liquid went through. That means that there's a flow through to these through these columns. That means the column's doing what it should be doing. As long as there was DNA in that supernatant, the column will grab it. And the fact that I see liquid flo that flowed through the column upon the centrifugation tells me that the column probably grabbed the plasmid. That's what I'm hoping for. All right. But you know what, guys? It's not perfect. The columns aren't perfect. You know, these are cells that we, that we lysed. So we have to wash the column and clean it of contaminants like phospholipid pieces, sodium ions from the sodium dodecyl sulfate, sodium dodecyl sulfate, the soap, the soap uh, molecules, uh, enzymes, ribosomes, cell walls, peptidoglycan cell walls of the E. coli. So there's all kinds of pieces we have to wash the column of. And we're going to use wash buffer. Wa wash buffer is mostly ethanol. Mostly ethanol. We're going to we're going we're going to use 400 400 microliters. Let me just double check my volumes. Yep, 400 microliters of wash. I'm going to open up all the columns. Now here's the cool part. If I drop the column, not a big deal. That column is holding the plasmid DNA. I mean, I don't want to drop it, but if I did, it wouldn't be the worst thing. Here we go. Let's add our 400. Put that in a clean area of wash buffer. I'll start with the with the back. Period 12. Here we go. T1. T2. T3. T4. T5. T6. And I'm really watching the wash buffer go in. T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. I got to check this table. No. See that table, table two, I think I spilled it. I'm going to go back and give you guys more. Doesn't matter really. All right, I gave you guys more, just in case, because I, I thought I spilled it. So, cap these up. And let's put these in. Centrifuge.
Fallon centrifuge hinges are out. That one's now out. And let's spin these. Let's spin this wash buffer through for one minute. Let's talk about what happens here. Okay, so the wash buffer is really interesting. The wash buffer is ethanol. The wash buffer is ethanol. It smells like ethanol. What's cool about the wash buffer is that it's it's polar. Ethanol is pretty polar. It has a hydroxyl, if you guys remember. It's CH3, CH2, OH. It's two carbons and a hydroxyl with H's everywhere. And that's a polar molecule. Ethanol can dissolve in water. But ethanol is not as polar as water. So ethanol is going to do a great job here of washing the column, but it's not going to wash off the DNA. It's going to keep the DNA on the column. That's the whole point here. We're going to keep the DNA on the column. We don't want to wash the DNA off the column. I want to keep the DNA on the column, the plasmids, but I want to wash off the garbage. Get rid of the garbage. What's the garbage? I want to get rid of the phospholipids remaining that didn't go with the soap step. I want to get rid of ribosomes. I want to get rid of enzymes, peptidoglycan pieces, sodium ions, other ions, denatured enzymes, other denatured proteins. Shoot, anything that these cells had in them except for plasmid DNA. So the column's grabbing the plasmid DNA and holding it tightly. The ethanol is dissolving everything else from the column except for the plasmid DNA. The plasmid DNA is stuck to the column. We're washing off the other stuff. Let's see if it works. I mean, I'll, I don't know for sure if it worked, but I have, I can infer from what I see here. So this step is interesting. I'm gonna start with period 12. I'm gonna work right to left. I'm gonna pull them out. You see that, what, that uh, liquid right there? That's the ethanol came through. Dump that out and I'm gonna put it right back in. And so this is an insurance step because I want to, I'm going to spin it again just to make sure. Oh, God, this is hard to get out. Just to make sure I get all of the ethanol out. I have to get that ethanol out. Mm. I'm get a tool here. This is just too tough. See, I'm looking at the collection tube and I'm dumping all that ethanol. I don't want the ethanol. I want the column, but I'm making sure all the ethanol flowed through. All right, table period three now. I just don't have the fingernails for this. I can't grab these things. I have to use a tool. Oh my, whoa, this is coming. All right, hold on a second. It's pulling the chamber out of the, okay. That's T6. T1. You may want to fast forward this part. watching I'm just pulling out every single tube here and making sure that the ethanol flowed through because I don't want any ethanol but see the column I could be really not careful with because the column is holding the plasma DNA and it's not going anywhere. That plasma DNA is stuck to the column. 
Every time I pull it out, the, the column comes out, but the collection tube stays in. It one doesn't want to leave. It loves its home. Okay. Good, and I checked that one. All right, so that's all of them. We're going to spin them again for a minute just to make sure all that ethanol is through. This is called the insurance. I call it the insurance step because we're... We want to make sure all the ethanol flowed through. So I'm going to spin it again, and I actually might have a tiny bit more of ethanol that flowed through the column. This is my dump bucket. This is big dump. I'm putting big dump over here. Now, I have these final collection tubes. These are critically important. I cannot knock these over. I'll say, okay, so this is where the numbering changes. These, these numbers for period three are 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And those correspond to these numbers. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then these numbers for period 12 are 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I have P12 on the side. And those correspond to here, 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26. All right, so that's where we're going to finally put them. So we have to get the DNA into these yellow tubes. We have to get the DNA into these yellow tubes. But it's stuck to the plas column. The DNA plasmids are stuck to the column. We have to get the DNA off the column into these tubes. And we're going to do that with this stuff. EB, elution buffer, and I love this word. Elution, elution, elution means to take, to wash something off of a surface and take it, or just to pull selectively something from a surface. It's called elute, it's a verb and a noun, if you use it differently. And so you're, you're eluding, we're gonna elute the DNA from the column, pull the DNA off the column. All right, let's see how these came out. God, I gotta go back and pull these out again. Hmm. And look, see, there's a tiny bit of ethanol, so the insurance was good. But now I'm done with this collection tube. That goes bye-bye. This is period three. Okay, now this is where the number gets weird. <laughs> so period, this is gonna go directly into tube 12. Yeah, okay. And this is, T5, P3, T5, collection goes bye-bye, that goes in 11. And this is four, goes in, four goes in 12. God, these things. P3, T1 goes in seven. I'm gonna open up the eight and nine. P3, T2 goes in eight. And P3, T3 goes in four. To get these old collection tubes out. We'll do the same for period six. All right, this is Pete's, I'm sorry, period 12. This is period 12, table three. That's gonna go here. Period 12, table one. That's gonna go in 21. Period 12, table five, goes in five. Period 12, table six, goes in 26. Period 12, table Four goes in 24, and period 12, table two, goes in 22, because those are the numbers in the box. All right, so now we're going to do the elution step. I'm gonna open up all of these spin columns that are nestled in the yellow tube, just to show, show you what I'm working with here. I have the spin column now in the yellow tube. 
the spin columns in the yellow tube. We're going to put an elution buffer and pull the DNA off the column so it can flow into the yellow tube, the final tube. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to do this with EB, elution buffer. Now, interestingly, elution buffer is just sterile water for the most part. It's just sterile water. DNA is super polar. It's charged. It's so polar, it's charged. And water and charge love each other, as you know. All right, here we go. I'm dialed to 60. 60. Elution buffer. I'm going to work period 12 first. Here we go. I got to make sure I watch the 60 go in. T1. T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T1, P3, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. All right. Done with that. Let's cap these up. And let's elute the DNA off the column and into these final yellow collection tubes. Now this is some spin because, because um, the caps are only one cap is on. I'll show you in a minute. The cap, only one cap is on. So the, so the inner caps are just flailing about. And we're going to spin these at 14,000 RPMs. So I call this the hell spin. Sometimes we lose a cap. It does happen. Let me show you guys. So you can see. Look at those yellow caps. Okay, let's do it. We're going to flow the elution buffer, which is mostly water, through a minute and 10. And we're going to, the water is going to pull the DNA off the column. The water is going to pull the DNA off the column because the water is more polar than the column. See, ethanol wasn't. But the water is. The water is more polar than the column. So the water wins the contest of polarity with the column and pulls off the plasma DNA. And the plasma DNA should elute with the water. Almost done. We'll know in a minute. So I'll know I did this correctly if I see... If I see the if I see 60 microliters of liquid in the yellow tube, I'll think I did it correctly. It should be correct. Right, I'm gonna put these in the right spot. So now I numbered them so I know where to put them in our box. This is period one. Period three is gonna be seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and period six, period twelve, sorry, will be in the twenties somewhere.
Almost done. Here we go. So we're going to know in a second. This is going to come off. Final collection area. Box. Pop comes off. All right. So let's do, um, it doesn't really matter necessarily which order we go in. This looks like period three, you guys. So now I don't want the column. The column's done. The column has been robbed of its plasmid DNA. It was holding it for so long, now it's done. I'm gonna toss the column, close the top. This is this is uh, tube seven, which I think is T2. And look, you can see the liquid in there. Hopefully you can, yeah, you can see that, I think. That liquid is 60 microliters of pure plasmid DNA. 60 mics of pure plasma DNA, and that's a mini prep. Column's done. Nice. T2 looks good. T3 looks good. T4, P3. Looks good. T5. Looks good. T6. Looks great. All right. We did a good job here. All right. Pier 12 now. Pier 12. This is all you. Now that was T6, Pier 12. This is spot 26. I got to find it. Ooh, where is that? There it is. 26. These are not in order. It doesn't really matter. I do have to be careful taking these out. This is spot 21, which is right there. Oh, looks good, though. In case you're wondering, it looks good. Spot 22 looks good. I saw DNA in there. It's good. Spot 23, which, is, which should be T3, P12, looks good. Spot 24, T5, looks good. And the last one, or that's T4, T5, look at that. You've got the DNA. We did it. Everybody has plasma DNA. All of these have 60 microliters of purified plasma DNA. And that is the mini prep done. I'm going to store these per the clone report sheet. Um, per the clone report sheet. You know, I might as well just show you real fast while I'm still presenting. And this is the clone report sheet. Uh, oh, you don't see it, do you? Yes, you do, right here. So this is you guys. This is uh, period three. Spot seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then period 12 is down here, but spots 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I wanted to do it right there. And there we go. So this is, uh, this is the clone name. This is the this is the clone name. Right here is the clone name. That's the clone name. This is the spot in the box. This is the date we started the overnight, and this is the person who prepared it. That is me. All right, but these will these will be your clones. You guys will analyze these. All right, I'm gonna pause the video or stop the video. All right now, that's a mini prep DNA.